What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Just wanted to remind you guys to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you end up enjoying this video. If you guys are liking these daily uploads, that support goes a long way to making sure I can continue to make them for a long time to come. If we could get to a thousand likes on this video, that would be a great milestone. If you guys have any thoughts about the stories in the video itself, please be sure to leave them in the comments below, as one of my favorite things about doing these videos is hearing your guys' thoughts on the stories. Without further ado, I will let you guys enjoy the upcoming scary stories, and I will see you guys again at the end of the video. Have a great day. Back when I got my first adult job after college, I moved into a smaller house with a roommate. The roommate was a girl that I went to high school with, and she and I were in the same grade. We weren't exactly friends, but we both knew each other and didn't have the same friend groups. I didn't know too much about her, but somehow after college we found ourselves living in the same city. We had been friends on Facebook or something like that, and because we both lived there and didn't really know anybody else, we decided to try and become friends and live together for a while. We were both women the same age and figured it would work itself out somehow, but I couldn't have been more wrong. At first, she seemed like a really cool person. I honestly forgot where she worked, but she had a pretty normal schedule like I did. Our bedrooms were the only two in the house and right next to each other. We weren't best buddies or anything, but we got along pretty well. At least, at first we did. She seemed to start exhibiting some sort of strange behavior. I remember I started noticing her leaving and coming home at all kinds of odd hours all the time. I would wake up to hearing her leaving in the middle of the night or coming home. I was a light sleeper. These times could range anywhere from midnight to 5 a.m. I had no idea where she could be going or why this started happening so much. It was at least several times a week. I remember one time I brought it up with her, asking why she was leaving at 2 a.m. She flat out denied it and said I must have heard the neighbor. I didn't tell her I knew it was her because I realized that whatever it is she was doing, she really didn't want me to know. I didn't really think that much of it for the most part, though. Everyone has their own secrets. One night, several months into living there, I was out late with some other friends. I got back at almost midnight. After arriving back home, I went inside. All the lights were off, so I turned on some of them. I noticed that my roommate's door was wide open, and she didn't appear to be inside. I called out her name, wondering if she was home. I figured she must be gone again when she didn't answer. I went into my bedroom and changed, got in bed quite tired. After closing my eyes, for some reason I had a hard time getting to sleep. I laid there for around 20 minutes, trying to get any rest, but it was like I was suddenly not tired anymore. I began to hear this strange noise inside my room. I had no idea what it could possibly be. I looked up and tried to search around. Eventually, I noticed my closet door was open slightly. All of a sudden, it began opening fully, and I saw my roommate emerge from inside. It was really dark in there, but I could clearly tell it was her. It was so strange. I had no idea what she was doing. I sat up and asked her what the hell was going on. As I spoke, she looked over and saw me, then immediately bolted into a sprint out of my room. I stayed where I was. I was just so confused. Only a minute later, I heard her run out the front door. At that point, I decided I needed to get out of there as soon as possible. For the next couple of days, I packed up my stuff. I don't know where my roommate was during that time, but she was never in the apartment. I moved out after that. I haven't spoken to her since. She blocked me on all social media, and I don't know why she was hiding in the closet in my room. She probably didn't expect me to get home when I did. That's why her door was open, and why she was in my room still. 
She must have had to hide in my closet and waited until she thought I was sleeping to try and leave. I'm glad I couldn't sleep though and that I noticed what she was doing. That was by far the creepiest roommate experience I ever had. This happened just a few years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Me and a friend Ethan had planned to have a sleepover at some point during the summer. Me and Ethan had been pretty close friends ever since the day we met. We really liked hanging out with each other all the time. We were only 15 and 16 when the story occurred. On this day, I was outside, playing some basketball, when I got a call from Ethan asking me if I wanted to come over for the night. His parents were out on a weekend trip. I told them I would ask mine, and when I did, they said it was fine for me to go. It was a Friday, and we would be able to spend all weekend together. I packed my stuff and left my house for Ethan's home. It was only about a half mile away from my own house so I could easily walk there and arrive within less than 10 minutes. Things were pretty peaceful and quiet while I walked, but about halfway through, I saw a man at the end of the road. He was walking in my direction, but was off to the left side of the street. I was on the right. I didn't really think anything of it. As the man started walking toward me, I became really alarmed. I didn't recognize him at all. When he got closer, I could see what the man looked like. He was very tall, maybe six foot four, wearing a green jacket and jeans. I wondered what this man wanted and was getting freaked out. I was pretty short at 15 and only five foot five. The man approached me and asked me where I was headed. I told him I was going to a friend's house. He said okay and continued walking. I found this very strange but I kept going on my way, relieved the man didn't do anything else. It was only about five minutes away now. When I got there, he was sitting on the couch waiting for me. We talked for about ten minutes before turning on his Xbox and playing some video games. We ended up sitting there playing for around a full three hours before getting a bit tired. It was now around 9 p.m. or so, we headed upstairs to Ethan's bedroom to decide our sleeping arrangements. We got pretty hungry, especially me because I hadn't eaten anything in a good while. Ethan said he would order us a pizza since he didn't really feel like cooking. Either that or he didn't know how to cook. He was about to pick up his living room phone when all of a sudden it started ringing. I was weirded out by this, but Ethan thought it must be his parents. He picked up, but when he did, all we heard was what sounded like somebody breathing on the other end. I just about had a heart attack when I heard this, but Ethan just had a confused look on his face. He hung up the phone and started to dial the number for the nearest pizza place. He ordered and then hung up. They said they would be there in about 15 minutes. When the pizza arrived, Ethan paid the delivery guy, and then he left. We went back to turn the TV on and decided to watch a movie until we finished the pizza. We watched about 30 minutes of it, then turned it off and headed upstairs. We were really tired now. We were going to bed as soon as we got up there. As we headed toward the upstairs area though, the living room phone began to ring again. We thought this was quite strange. It was already really late at night. Ethan and I walked back downstairs to answer the phone. When we did, we heard the same breathing from earlier. Now I was officially creeped out. Ethan was just really annoyed. He told whoever it was to stop this immediately or he would call the police. Looking back, I don't even know why he said that. Because when he did... I could see the fear on his face clear as day. When the person on the other end of the line spoke, he didn't harass us or anything, but he said something far worse, at least in my opinion. The person on the phone said Ethan's real home address. As soon as he said that, 
Ethan's face was of pure terror. He yelled at the person, demanding to know who he was and what he was talking about. Why don't you look outside your living room window, they whispered. When we did, our hearts dropped. This is something I'll never forget. Directly in the middle of Ethan's front lawn was a man. We couldn't believe what we were looking at. We couldn't make out who it was because of how dark it was. Ethan hung up the phone and continued to stare at the person. This lasted about 30 seconds. All of a sudden, with no warning, the man took off into a sprint toward the front door. He threw his entire body against it, over and over again. Ethan and I ran upstairs and locked ourselves in his parents' bedroom. Ethan then took out his cell phone and called the police. They said they would arrive within five minutes. It made us feel a lot better. Three minutes later, the man stopped slamming his body against the door. We assumed he must have left. About two minutes later, the police arrived and did a search of the entire neighborhood. They couldn't find the guy at all. They told us that if anything else happened, to not hesitate to call again. When they left, we went back to Ethan's bedroom and talked about what happened. I'll skip the entire conversation. It'll make a little more sense later. We were able to fall asleep at around 12.30 or so. At around 3 o'clock in the morning, I was woken up by a knock at the front door. I woke Ethan up, and we both headed downstairs. We looked out the window again, but this time we didn't see anyone. When we looked out the front door, though, we saw it was the same man that messed with us three hours ago. We ran upstairs and called the police. They said they were on their way, but I was still worried about the man trying to break in. There was no way we would be able to fight back. This guy was gigantic. Neither Ethan or I were very big at all. We stayed in his parents' bedroom for about five minutes until we heard the sounds of glass breaking. The man walked around downstairs before starting to head upstairs towards us. We ran further into Ethan's parents' bathroom and hid in there. Two minutes later, we heard police sirens coming from a block away. The police were able to make it inside. Ethan and I walked into the hallway and saw downstairs the police were holding a man. Now that I got a much closer look at him, I realized it was the exact same man I'd talked to on my way to Ethan's house. The police left with him, but we couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. At around 7 o'clock in the morning, I packed up my stuff and left. When I got back to my house, my parents were in the kitchen. They asked me how the sleepover was. I just said it was good. I didn't want to talk about it. I went into my bedroom, laid on my bed, tired and exhausted. The next day, my parents got a call from Ethan's. They said they didn't want me back at their house again. My mom looked confused when they said that and asked what they were talking about. They said I broke the living room window. I could hear Ethan telling his parents in the background that it wasn't me. I told my mom the whole story, and she believed me. They ended up arguing on the phone for a full five minutes before hanging up altogether. And that was the very last time I went to Ethan's house. At least we could still have sleepovers at my house from that point on, though. I guess after the man continued walking after speaking to me, he must have followed me to Ethan's home, which explains how he got the address. Ethan and I are still friends today, and nothing like that has ever happened again. I still wonder why the man did all that. This is a scary experience I had when I used to work at Starbucks. I was an employee there several years ago and worked there for almost two years. This was toward the end of my time there. One time, I was working a closing shift. We closed at 8 p.m. every night, and generally, I would stay for a while after finishing tasks. On this night, for the last few hours we were open, I was working with one other co-worker. Things were pretty quiet for most of the day, but when it got to be about 6 p.m. or so, it was especially silent. We had very few customers coming in, 
and during the 7 o'clock hour, nobody came in at all. Our location was not in that busy of an area, but a lot of people would still go there in the morning. Usually, a couple people would come inside and work on their laptops or whatever throughout the afternoon and night, but not this time though. I didn't really have a problem with that. We were able to start cleaning and stuff a little bit early. It soon became apparent that we probably would not get any more customers for the rest of the night. At maybe 7.45 or so, I told my co-worker she could go home. At around 7.45 or so, I told my co-worker she could go home, and I would finish up with everything else. I knew she was still in school and had a lot of homework to do. She thanked me and left. Now it was just me. At probably 7.55 or so, I went into the back room. I was doing some of the normal tasks I would do when we closed. I spent about two or three minutes in the back room area. I was going to go back out. We had a large swinging door with a small window in it that separated behind the counter from the back room area. As I was about to walk through, I just barely noticed something through the window that made me stop in my tracks. There appeared to be somebody behind the counter. This was really strange. I hadn't heard anybody come inside or anything. It wasn't my co-worker either. It was a man. He was somewhat tall, at least taller than I was. At first, he looked like he was wearing a hat, but when he turned a little, I saw it was a mask, a full ski mask. He was near the cash register. At that point, I realized this guy was probably trying to rob us. I moved back from the door and went further into the back room. I felt like an idiot for not just locking the doors and closing early. He must have entered when I was in the back, and I didn't even notice. As I walked further back there, though, I heard footsteps approaching the door between us. We had a decent-sized back area, but there was not a lot of space there. It was mostly filled with various boxes of all sizes, and extra supplies such as ingredients and cups. The first thing I thought to do was find a large box in the back corner. Being the smaller female that I am, I jumped inside of it, trying not to make any noise. I'm barely five foot tall, and fit inside just fine. I grabbed another empty box on the shelf right next to me, and covered myself with it. The man did not immediately enter the back room. I was expecting the door to open for the entire time I was getting the box, but it didn't. I'm not sure what he was doing, but he was remaining on the other side of the door for a while. I had my phone in my pocket still, luckily, so I took it out and called the police. Only 30 seconds after I called, I heard the door to the back room open. I hung up on them prematurely. As soon as I heard him entering, I didn't want the man to discover me. All I had been able to say was the Starbucks' location that I was at and that I thought I was being robbed. The operator was in the middle of asking me a question when I hung up the phone. I hoped the police would arrive quickly. When the man entered the back room, he walked in and seemed to stop in place. Moments later, I heard him walking closer to me. As he did, he began mumbling to himself. It was something I couldn't quite make out. My heart was racing like crazy, and I hoped he wouldn't find me. I was hidden pretty good, but it was a terrifying situation to be in. He got within 10 feet of me, then turned and walked back. A short time later, I heard the door behind the counter open and close again. After that, I didn't hear a whole lot. I stayed hidden where I was and didn't dare to leave. I texted friends and family and waited inside the box for 30 minutes. I heard some more noises coming from inside, and before long I realized it was the police. I found out the guy had left before they got there, unfortunately. I told them everything I could, and we looked at the security footage as well. The man had indeed entered when I was in the back, and went right behind the counter for the cash register. He was wearing a ski mask the whole time, so it was impossible to identify him. He stole everything that was inside, and then left after going into the back room. 
After talking with the police, I was finally able to go home. I found out later that the man who robbed the store was actually caught. I didn't want to work any closing shifts for a while afterward, though. I think I worked there for another month or two before I quit altogether. I wonder if the guy was watching the store from outside and saw me go into the back. I really have no idea. Either way, it was good timing that I wasn't behind the counter when he entered. I wouldn't want to know what would have happened. This happened not too long ago. I think it was maybe two or three weeks ago now. I was in the city and I worked downtown. I take the bus there from my apartment. After work one day, I did a little bit of shopping and then was heading back to the bus stop. I really had to use the bathroom, probably because I'd been drinking a lot of water. At first, I was just going to try and wait until I got home, but I realized that I really could not wait that long. As I walked down the city sidewalk, I looked out for any business that would have a restroom I could use. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to find a bathroom to use in the city. There are so many people, many businesses don't have public restrooms. Others make you buy something or get a key from behind the counter. It was about 6 p.m. or so. The sidewalks were really busy. I soon saw a Starbucks coffee shop up ahead, and I figured there would be a good bet. I headed for the Starbucks and walked inside. When I got in, I saw that it was very busy. Lots of people standing around or sat down at tables. There was about three or four people in line, and even somebody ordering as well. I headed straight for the back where the bathrooms were. I don't go to Starbucks very often, but I've been there enough to know the layout of the place. When I got to the back, I saw the restrooms, but you needed a code to get in. Well, that was disappointing. I didn't want to bother asking an employee for the code. Perhaps I would have to buy something to get it, which I didn't want to do. It was a line of people waiting to buy something anyway which would have defeated the purpose. I decided to just leave. As I started to head out though, a random guy made eye contact with me. This particular guy appeared to be just kind of standing around. He looked as though he knew me or recognized me from somewhere, but I didn't know him at all. It seemed a bit strange to me. Maybe I looked like somebody he knew or something? The man was average height with light brown hair and glasses. I walked past him and started to leave the Starbucks when I noticed the man leaving behind me. I didn't really think much of it at first. I turned to the left and walked down the sidewalk in search of another place that may have a restroom. I do remember that as I was walking down the sidewalk, a man was walking behind me at a distance that seemed a very strange. Eventually, two or three minutes later, I reached a hotel. I decided to walk inside the lobby and see if they had a bathroom in there. When I walked inside, I couldn't believe it. The guy behind me also entered and started to follow me in there. I walked through the lobby and found the bathroom that actually did allow public use. I went inside. Luckily, the man did not attempt to follow me in there. I was in the bathroom for about a minute or so. Once I left, I saw the man was just kind of standing around, almost like he had been waiting for me. I thought about asking the guy if he was following me or what he was doing, but I didn't do that. Instead, I just walked past him to leave. As I did, he started to follow me yet again. I left the hotel and went back onto the sidewalk. I kept walking and passed by the Starbucks again. Believe it or not, I was still being followed. I tried not to pay attention to the guy and walk faster. There were still quite a few other people out on the sidewalk, so I tried to blend in with them. I passed people left and right, and at last I made it to the bus stop. I was just on time for the bus to arrive very shortly. As I looked around me, I realized it was now really dark out. I didn't see the guy, which did make me feel a little bit better. 
I figured he must have stopped following me at some point. Soon the bus arrived. I boarded it and found an open seat toward the back. There were a lot of other people on the bus, and more continued to pile on. I still didn't see the man, so I figured I must have made it safe and sound. The bus left, and I was on it for about 15 minutes, until we arrived at my stop. After I got off the bus, I had to walk a few blocks. That would take a little more than five minutes. As we reached it, I got up and headed off the bus. After leaving, though, I noticed someone else get off. I thought to myself, there's no way that's him. But when I looked behind me, it was the very same guy. He had been on the bus the whole time, blending in with the crowd. I hadn't noticed him at all. I couldn't believe it. I was so freaked out. I just started running. I sprinted as fast as I could, all the way back to my apartment. I didn't even bother to look back the entire time. When I made it back to my apartment building, I used my key fob to get inside and made sure the door closed behind me. I didn't see the guy as I did so. I went up to my apartment on the second floor and luckily did not see the man again after that. That was all several weeks ago. I have no clue who the guy was or why he followed me. I'm hoping he didn't see what building I lived in. I just don't know though. Did he keep following me as I was running? I have no way to tell. All I can do is hope he never comes back. This is something that happened back when I was a kid. I believe I was around 8 or 9 years old. During that time, I had a lot of friends at school and would sometimes hang out with them. One of my friends was named Adam, and he was having a birthday party I got invited to. The party was on a Friday after school, and there was going to be a sleepover at Adam's house. Not that many other people had been invited. I think only five or six people, maybe, if my memory is correct. I knew most of the guys pretty well, but a few of them not so much. After school on Friday, I went home and my mom dropped me off at Adam's house sometime in the afternoon. I don't remember all that well what we actually did. I know there was pizza, ice cream, and we had a lot of fun. That night, we all shuffled into Adam's basement to watch a movie together. We were all going to be sleeping in Adam's basement as well. It was pretty nice down there, actually. In the main living room area down there, they had a large TV and a few couches as well. One person could sleep on each one, and the rest of us would be sharing the floor in sleeping bags. After Adam's parents went to bed upstairs, all the lights in the house were out. We were watching the movie in Adam's basement, it was not completely below ground, so there was a little window near the top of the wall that was behind us. I remember that during the middle of the movie, for whatever reason, I suddenly got the urge to turn around and look to the window. When I did, something caught my eyes. I couldn't see all that well, but it looked like a man was looking in. I tapped the shoulder of whoever was next to me. He looked back too to confirm and we both realized we really were seeing someone there. That's when the kid next to me stood up. Everyone looked at him as he yelled out, Who is that guy? Everyone looked toward the window now. The crazy part is, the guy was still looking in. He didn't move or respond at all. He was definitely a grown man, but none of us recognized him. Everybody started freaking out. We all ran upstairs, and Adam went to wake up his parents. About a minute later, Adam's parents went downstairs to look as well, but the man was already gone. I remember Adam's dad going outside with a flashlight and looking all around the house. He came back in five minutes later and said whoever had been out there was now gone. I didn't know exactly what time it was then but it was around 11 p.m. if I had to guess. Adam's parents asked if anybody wanted to go home. They said they could call our parents for us. If we didn't want to spend the night, it was perfectly fine. 
Everybody wanted to stay, though. I think we all figured it was just some random guy looking in for whatever reason, and that he wouldn't bother to come back. Plus, there were six of us there, so it didn't feel that scary in the moment. After that, Adam's parents went back to bed, and all of us kids shuffled back into the basement, where we resumed our movie. Occasionally, I would look back toward the window, as did a few other kids, but none of us saw the man again. He really seemed to be gone for good. After the movie, most of us got pretty tired. I was sleeping on the floor, so I shuffled into my sleeping bag and quickly fell asleep. The very next thing I remember is waking up. When I did, I noticed it was completely dark out still. I wanted to go back to sleep, but I suddenly wasn't tired at all. I sat up and looked around, and that's when I saw the man at the window again. He was just as he had been before. I couldn't believe it. I crawled over to whoever was closest to me. It was a kid named Darren, I believe. I pointed out the window, and when Darren saw it, he started running for the stairs. I followed him. When we made it up, we began knocking on Adam's parents' bedroom door. They woke up, and after we told them the man was back, they called the police. We went downstairs, and the guy was now gone once more. The police came out, and everybody woke up now. The man was not found, though. We all stayed up for the rest of the night. I think it was about 4 a.m. when the guy came back the second time. After that, all our parents were called pretty early in the morning. They came and picked us up. I would guess the man never went back to Adam's house after that. I think if he did, Adam would have told me, but maybe he just never noticed. That was definitely the scariest experience I ever had at a sleepover, though. When I was a kid, my best friend's name was Will. Will and I would stay over at each other's houses all the time. It was always a lot of fun when we would have sleepovers. Usually, we would watch movies or play video games. This happened when we were both 11 years old. I remember that I went over to Will's house to spend the night. He lived just a few miles away from me and had kind of a large backyard. There was a patch of woods back there as well. After I went to Will's house, we stayed around playing video games, just like we usually did. I remember his parents had gone to bed, but we were staying up pretty late in Will's bedroom. He had his own TV in his room, so we weren't really bothering anyone. At around 1 in the morning, we were still gaming and going strong. It was summertime, and we didn't have school the next day or anything, so we wanted to maximize our time together. Because it was summer, though, Will's room was getting kind of hot. I remember he walked over to open up his window, because it was cool at night outside. There was also a good breeze going, it seemed like. After opening up his window, though, I heard him mutter, That's weird. I wondered what exactly he was talking about. When I asked him, he said he thought he could see somebody in his backyard. I got up and walked over to him to look as well. We hadn't been able to see out his window before, because he always kept it covered with a blanket. It also didn't have a great view of things unless you were standing right in front and looking out of it. When I looked, I didn't see anybody. Will said that the guy was gone now. There were quite a few trees and bushes in Will's backyard. Hearing that Will thought he had seen a man back there was really creepy, but it was also sort of exciting in a weird way. I asked Will where he had gone, what he looked like, all that sort of stuff. He said he'd only seen the guy for a split second, and that he'd run behind one of the trees so he hadn't got a good look at him. He also said the guy had been kind of far away. We kept watching the window for quite a while, but we didn't see any movement out there. Will then asked me if I wanted to go out. I guess we were feeling sort of brave. I said yes. It was really dumb looking back. We should have just stayed inside. We decided to go outside and look around to make sure that everything was truly okay. 
We left Will's bedroom and walked through his house to the back door. We decided to go out the back door for his garage, which was connected to the house. After we got outside, it was very dark and quiet. There was the sound of leaves rustling in the wind, but that was all we could hear. We walked close to the house at first, just looking around. Everything seemed to be fine. We quickly went from feeling a bit nervous to feeling very relaxed. It seemed like whoever had been out there was gone by now. We walked a little bit farther out into Will's backyard and got kind of distracted by finding one of his footballs. It was lying behind a tree from where we'd lost it in the yard not long before. Will picked it up and threw it at me. We started to toss the ball back and forth and we kind of wandered off into the back part of his yard by the woods. It was then that we heard a noise coming from nearby. We looked over and saw a man emerging from behind a bush about 10 feet from the side of his house. The guy then went right up next to it, on the side of it, and disappeared out of our sight. The man had not looked in our direction, so we didn't think he knew we were actually back there. There was a good chance that he had heard us somehow, though. We were at least 100 feet away now. We were in a tough spot. We wanted to go back inside, but we were so far away from the house. Will said we had to go back, but I didn't want a chance going near that guy. The back door to the garage we'd come out of was also unlocked. I hoped the man wouldn't go over there. The good thing for us was that the garage door was on the opposite side of the house from where the man was. Now that the guy was out of our sight and had disappeared, we didn't know if he was in the front yard or what. Will and I decided to run back. He counted to three, and we both took off sprinting as fast as we could for the back door. I didn't look in the direction where the man had gone the entire time. I didn't want to know where he was. We pretty soon made it back to the back door. Will and I both jumped in as fast as we could and slammed it behind us. We locked the door as soon as we were inside the garage. It was a crazy adrenaline rush for just a second. I felt relieved, but then we heard the doorknob begin to turn. This was less than five seconds after Will had locked the door. I couldn't believe it. Will and I ran back to the door leading inside of his house. We went inside and made sure to lock that door as well. Will ran to his parents' bedroom and woke them up. Within minutes, the police were called, and Will and I hid underneath his bed. The police got there a short time later and searched the entire property, but never found the man. He must have fled while they were coming. We answered questions as best we could, but we never got a very good look at the man. We only saw him at a long distance and in the dark. I really couldn't tell any significant details about him. After the police left, we finally went to sleep. The guy never returned, luckily, and I went to Will's house countless more times after. I stayed over many times as well, and nothing like that ever happened again. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now, guys. So thank you so much for watching, 
and I hope you guys have a great day.